Greetings, Emmett here from readingforwisdom.com. I don't think there has been an event in the past 1,000 years, and there certainly hasn't been one in the past uh, century, that rivals the Holocaust for really showing the darkness at the heart of humanity. And there's so many questions about the Holocaust that uh, still hang in the air. And a central one is really how could it have happened? How did the Holocaust happen? Particularly, how did the Holocaust originate in a most civilized, modern nation like Germany? Germany, the seat of high culture throughout the uh, last couple of hundred years, and yet descended somehow into madness. And this madness is what's explored in this very somber book, very scholarly book, uh, a stimulating read, an excellent read, piece of wonderful research about a very, very terrible, horrid uh, chapter in human history. And that's Hitler's Willing Executioners, Ordinary Germans and the Holocaust, written by Daniel Goldhagen and published in 1996. The book set out, and Goldhagen, who uh, this actually is the product of his doctoral research, Goldhagen uh, sought to answer some of the questions. And uh, one of the questions was uh, about the scale. How could something so large as the Holocaust happen with uh, just the aid of a small number, relatively small number, of fanatical Nazis? So he uh, really set out to explore that question. Was the Holocaust just the work of these fanatical Nazis, or was there something broader at work? He also uh, wanted to explore um, the participants, and what was the motivation behind people who participated in the Holocaust, the people who drove the trains, who guarded the camps, who pulled the triggers, uh, who filled in the paperwork, um, you know, what was behind it? And he builds and questions uh, the myth that was um, quite prevalent for, for many, many, many decades, which was people were just following orders, or they were in fear of being punished if they uh, didn't follow orders, or they were just one little cog in a machine and they didn't realize the scale of what they were involved in. All these excuses to um, sort of uh, damp down the uh, blame. So Goldhagen, uh, explored these questions and many more questions and the results of his research are eye-opening and shattered a lot of myths. So what are some of the major things that the book reveals? Well for me one of the eye-openers was the scale, the breadth and depth of anti-Semitism that existed right across German society. Uh, right across the German population. And I'd never really fully understood how deep that anti-Semitism was. And this anti-Semitism was not something that the Nazis brought to Germany. It was something that was already there that the Nazis exploited. And in fact, anti-Semitism was a whole part of the Nazi, Nazis' uh, uh, raison d'etre, their reason to be and to exist, and something that fired and animated them. But that anti-Semitism went way beyond the Nazis, and Goldhagen uh, really shows the role of a couple of institutions. And the most damning uh, indictment that he has is the churches in Germany, the established churches, particularly the Protestant churches, uh, the Lutheran churches. And he reveals really the deep, insidious role they played in the Holocaust in gearing up, in normalizing anti-Semitism. And in one infamous edict uh, that was issued during the war, the Protestant churches actually encouraging the final solution. The education system doesn't come across uh, very well either. Uh, schools, school teachers, uh, indoctrinating uh, young impressionable children with uh, anti-Semitism. Another thing that the book um, punctures, another myth that the book punctures, is that the Holocaust was a purely industrial thing, that it was made possible by big-scale murder 
using gas chambers. What Goldhagen shows is that yes, the gas chambers were used, but they um, actually weren't that hugely efficient in killing vast number of people. Actually, lots and lots of the millions and millions of Jews and Slavs, and also the mentally ill and gypsies who were murdered, but mainly Jews, were murdered in much less uh, sophisticated uh, manners. Shootings, burnings, starving, brutalization, killing. And shooting uh, on, a, on a vast scale occurred um, throughout uh, German, throughout the uh, East. And um, it was, you know, the hundred people here, the thousand people there, and in one case 40,000 people shot uh, over the uh, score of a couple of days in one infamous incident. That was what the Holocaust was. It was simply lots and lots and lots of mass murder. And that scale is something that, of course, uh, uh, asks the next question. How many people were involved in the Holocaust? Now, we have been uh, sort of almost convinced that the Holocaust was the work of a small number of Nazi elites, and it was the SS and these uh, fanatics. But actually, Goldhagen shows that the tens of thousands of camps, the tens of thousands of death facilities, the various different uh, police units, uh, army units that were involved in uh, mass killing over the course of the Holocaust, involved many, many tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. But this was, was killing on a really vast scale. And in fact, uh, the guilty, uh, many of, of course, uh, who went unpunished were uh, vast, vast numbers of ordinary Germans. And one of the things that Goldhagen shows us from his research, that these weren't fanatical Nazis, that they weren't party members, they weren't uh, SS uh, figures. They were ordinary people, ordinary people who were drafted in uh, to be camp guards, ordinary people who ran the train system, ordinary people who um, just did the bureaucracy behind uh, killing. So it was much, much bigger than a purely Nazi affair. And a very valuable thing, uh, but a frightening thing, that uh, Goldhagen exposes is the excuse we were just following orders. The excuse that um, we were in fear of punishment. We had to do this, or otherwise we'd be locked away in prison. We'd be executed if we didn't toe the line. And through his access to archives, he has shown that actually this is a complete myth. There are no credible cases on record of anybody in the German system being punished for not going along with uh, the Holocaust's activities. In fact, in uh, very interesting passages, uh, Goldhagen shows that Himmler only wanted the most enthusiastic people involved in the killing. And in one case, Himmler issued prior to a particular operation, uh, almost like pardons, for uh, some of the SS figures. If you're too squeamish for this, step aside. It won't affect your career. You won't be punished. Uh, we'll get other more enthusiastic people to take part. So he really, really uh, banishes uh, those myths about coercion and just following order. And he also shows how German society knew exactly what was happening, exactly what was going on in the camps. It's really, really quite uh, tragic. Um, expose. And one more thing it shows is actually the mania of the regime in its desire to effectively exterminate the Jewish people. They really didn't give a damn about the consequences to war production. So one of the things that Goldhagen shows here is many instances where even though um, material uh, resources were needed and supplies were needed to for the front, particularly the Russian front. Um, whole factories would be just simply taken out and executed uh, at the drop of a hat, even though they were vital for war production. Um, so really, you wonder what was um, Hitler's big motivation? Was it actually winning the war or exterminating the Jews? From the evidence that's presented in here, I think it's pretty obvious the Nazis and their uh, fellow travelers wanted the Jewish question, as they called it, to be answered first uh, over and above um, any other consideration. As I said, apart from some uh, isolated figures like uh, notably Pastor Walter Hochstadter, 
uh, a critic of what was happening in Germany. Generally, uh, Goldhagen is damning of the role of the authorities, the administration of the churches, and their role in uh, encouraging and uh, supporting the Holocaust. In uh, this passage, uh, Goldhagen reveals some of their thinking uh, about why they supported the Nazis. The churches welcomed the Nazis' ascendancy to power, for they were deeply conservative institutions which, like most other German conservative bodies and associations, expected the Nazis to deliver Germany from what they deemed to have been the spiritual and political mire that was the Weimar Republic, with its libertine culture, democratic disorder, its powerful socialist and communist parties which preached atheism and which threatened to rob the churches of their power and influence. The churches expected that the Nazis would establish an authoritarian regime that would reclaim the wrongly dishonoured virtues of unquestioning obedience and submission to authority, re restore the cultivation of traditional moral values and enforce adherence to them. The Nazi party was, to be sure, not wholly faultless in the eyes of Christians. Indeed, it exhibited disquieting tendencies. Some of its ideologues were manifestly anti-Christian. Others urged a nebulous version of Teutonic paganism. And the party's support of Christianity embodied in its program was framed in vague, puzzlingly qualified terms. These unwholesome facets of the Nazis the churches tended to interpret with the sort of wishful optimism that was to be found among many people who welcomed Nazism while, while disliking certain of its aspects, as transient excrescences upon the body of the party which Hitler, in his wisdom and benevolence towards religion, would slew off as with so many other alien accretions. So, we really can't do this book and the research that sits behind it and its findings, any justice in um, the short uh, few minutes that we have for a book review on this channel. But I do recommend reading this book. It's not something that you could call a fun read. It's not something you could call a great book because its contents are so horrid, so tragic, such an indictment of the dark side of human nature. But it's a very, very wise book. I think it's something that everybody should read. And of course, reading this um, and the lessons of the Holocaust are something that we still have to continue to think about today because we know that anti-Semitism has never really gone away and it's rising again throughout the world. Sobering. If you like the type of books that we're reviewing on this program, do subscribe to our channel give us a like and also come over to readingforwisdom.com where we have lots more resources, more things to delight, to amuse, to inform, to make us that bit wiser. Thank you. Mm -hmm.